Hey guys, it's Blade again from Cara Security. Today we have the first part of a new three-part series. We're going to go through a range of five channel amps, starting from an entry level, going to a mid-range, and then to a higher end. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the entry level series JBL Club A5055. Starting off with the JBL Club A5055, straight out of the box, this is how it's going to come to you. So, at the top of the box, you have the instruction manual and your little bits and bobs, which I'll go through in a second. You obviously have the amplifier itself, which is nicely packed. You've got polystyrene on it either end to keep it nice and safe in transit. There is the amplifier itself. This is your base controller, which I'll go through in a second. But first of all, let's unwrap the amplifier to show you exactly how it looks. Okay, so this is the JBL amplifier. Now obviously it is missing the JBL logo. This is in this packet here. So basically it allows you to add this at a later stage. So if you fit in this amplifier, say the other way around or upside down, you can fit the uh, logo the right way around so it looks better for you. This is how the amplifier comes. Now, obviously this is the business end of the amplifier. Over this side you have your power inputs. This is a four gauge input capable amplifier, so it's four gauge cable only, you can't use anything less. And I would always recommend you use something good quality, like oxygen free copper power cable. So you have the earth, the remote, and your power. And then you have a row of 30 amp blade fuses. This is just to protect the amplifier itself. If anything does happen, if you short, accidentally put the power in the ground, whatever. Uh, then you have all of your speaker outputs. These are Obviously front, rear, sub. So you have four inputs as positive, negative, positive, negative, same vice versa. And these are your RCA inputs. So you have three stages of inputs, front, rear and sub, same as before. Obviously this is from your head unit, RCA is from your head unit into the amplifier and then outputs speaker cable out to your speakers. That's basically it. Now, they've actually built this in a way that you can hide all of the adjustments. So as you can see, throughout the rest of the amp, there's nothing else. So you'd think there's no way to adjust the amp, but there is. I'll show you that quickly now. Okay, so this little trim just pops off, like so. That comes off to the side. Then you have this little access panel here. This slides back to reveal your adjustability, which is over this side here. So it keeps it all nice and clean, nice and clean install. Starting at this end, we have the level input switch. So if you're using high level input, you'd want to turn that down just to uh, convert the voltage so it's a cleaner signal. Um, otherwise, it's a low level input, so you can adjust it higher, higher or higher. Um, then you have your turn on mode. So this is a remote or DC, so that's signal sensing or remote input. Then we have the front and rear adjustments and the sub adjustment. So we have the gain at the top, the crossover, which is high pass, low pass filter or, or full. Uh, same with the rear, gain, crossover, frequency. Um, and then next to that we have the sub controls. So we have bass boost, the phase, a frequency adjustment, gain, and then inputs. So that's pretty much it in terms of your adjustments. There's not loads on it keeps it nice and simple. So that is basically the amplifier itself. Now it's it's a rather big amplifier, but not too chunky, not too big for a five channel. I've seen a lot bigger than this, um, so it's not too bad. It's not very heavy at all, and it's quite a sturdy build as well. Now back onto the accessories that we had in the box. Here we have a few little options. Now, obviously most of the time, if you're using an amplifier like this, you would have already changed your head unit. If you haven't, and you need to run high level input for instance, like speaker cable inputs, they've actually added this in. So rather than having a completely separate plug to take in a speaker signal, they've added these. So this is an RCA on this side and a speaker input on the other side. So you can actually put your speaker cables directly in and plug it into the RCA. Now I'd always recommend you use a line out converter for this to drop the signal, otherwise the quality out of this is gonna be compromised if you use high level input. But if you have to use it, then you can. 
Um, the other thing out of this little bag here is just a, a couple of spare fuses, just in case you do have any mishaps in, in terms of installing it. Other than that, we have the screws to screw down the amplifier itself in the little holes. We have some stickers, everybody loves a sticker. We have a couple more screws, just the spares. And then we have the JBL logo, which I mentioned earlier. And then you have the instruction manual, which is pretty self-explanatory. You just go through that and it tells you what you need to know. And then last but not least, we have the base controller. So base controller input is just next to the RCA inputs. Just there, it's just like a phone plug. Just plug it in. There's a five meter extension cable on it. And then you would mount the base controller up to the front of the vehicle, wherever you want it. And then you can adjust the base frequencies only. So this is not gonna adjust the speaker output levels or anything like that, just the base frequencies. So if you feel like it's a bit too bassy or not enough, you can adjust it from the front of the car without getting out and adjusting stuff. So that's quite handy that comes with that. Now, the specs of the unit itself, the amplifier will push out 50 watts RMS by four. So that's the four channels here, front, left, front, right, rear, left, rear, right, right is 50 watts RMS. That's at four ohms. The sub-channel output of four ohms is 320 watts RMS. So it's good power output, nothing crazy, but it's good for an entry level setup. Uh, now it does actually push out a little bit more at two ohms. It's 65 watt RMS by four and 500 by one. So you have a lot more power at two ohms. So what you can do as well is you can set, most, most door speakers are gonna be around four ohms anyway. Um, so you can run them at 50 watts RMS, but if you have a subwoofer that's running at two ohms, you can do that also. So you can run it at different impedances depending on what channel you're using. That's no problem. So yeah, that's my choice of an entry level five channel amp. Okay guys, so that was the brief overview of the JBL Club A5055. Hope you enjoyed it. Current retail price on the unit is $329.99 as of today's date, uh, but all current prices and updates will be on our website at carridiesecurity.com. Now, that was obviously the entry level range. The next video we'll be looking at the mid range, which is an Audison SR5.600. So if you'd like to watch me go through that in a bit more depth, then look, for, look forward to the next video. Uh, but that's pretty much it for me. Hope you liked the video. Uh, please feel free to like, uh, share it to your friends, and we will see you next time. Pretty much it for me today. <laughs>